Okay, so I haven't made a video for ages, it seems. I think the last video I made was last Saturday. But anyway, I'm here to review two new movies. Um, first of which being King Arthur, Legend of the Sword. Now, I'm a big fan of Guy Ritchie. I really like his movies. Um, Snatch, Lockstock, two very good movies. I love his take on Sherlock Holmes. It's very different, and his style worked with that. Um, Man from Uncle, I didn't mind. I thought it was okay. Uh, so, overall, I think his movies have been overall pretty decent. So, uh, with King Arthur, Legend of the Sword, I was cautiously optimistic about it. I was like, yeah, it'll probably be pretty good. Guy Ritchie's going to put his spin on it. And the start of this movie started off really well. Um, it had that typical medieval, you know, opening where it had the backstory and everything. I was like, okay, I'm not too into this. But, you know, when it went into the uh, story of the film, and there's a scene with, like, an exchange between uh, Charlie Hunnam's uh, Arthur and he was talking to, like, um, you know, other people, and it goes around and it has flashbacks to, you know, him fighting or him doing something. And uh, it's like the dialogue that was used in Snatch and Lockstock, you know, that typical, you know, and it even has, like, the Cockney accents and things, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm quite enjoying this. It's like a medieval Snatch. I, I can roll with that. And then it gets, you know, the pacing gets slower, and it has to do the things that medieval films have to do and King Arthur films have to do. And I was sort of confused as to why Guy Ritchie took this film on. But, you know, if he had a passion for it and made it good, I could get behind it. And overall, I found enjoyment with it and I found bad things with it. And it's one of those movies, um, and I don't like talking about these movies because there's not much to say about them. Because it's one of those movies where it's not bad enough to be considered awful and it's not good enough to be considered a good movie. It's just a really average movie. And that's what King Arthur Legend of the Sword is. It's not... One of those movies where I'll say, well, you shouldn't watch it, but it's not one where I'll say, go and watch it now. Um, I can imagine half of the budget for this movie was spent on a David Beckham cameo and a fat lady with tentacles. Those were the two things that looked like they would be the most expensive in this film. Because some of the CGI is a bit bad, and some of it, as you could imagine, is very good. So again, it's average in that sense. But uh, the David Beckham cameo will really take you out of this movie. It is really weird. Um, you know, so you got the scene where King Arthur pulls the sword from the stone and he's just there. And it's like, oh, okay, this is where we're going. Guy Ritchie's casting his best friend in a role that doesn't really suit him. But yeah, the highlight of this movie was probably Jude Law. He is pretty good in this film. Uh, I love him as Dr. Watson in the Holmes films. And as a villain, it does work. He does play a villainous character quite well. Um... Yeah, he likes to chew the scenery in the scenes he's in, but uh, I enjoyed his performance more than most. Charlie Hunnam was actually quite good. Um, I like the guy. I think he was the main character in Pacific Rim. I can't really remember. I saw the film a long time ago, but I liked that movie, and I thought Charlie Hunnam was a good King Arthur. He had the physique for it. Um, he had the like ability to him. Because when I saw that he was cast, I was sort of thinking, this is going to be a poor casting choice, because he's not gonna you know he's not gonna relish in the role and he did he don't he did well and i think he uh had a genuine passion for being in this movie so that was good uh little finger from game of thrones aiden gillen love the guy he's in the movie as a, a really good archer uh doesn't really play into the plot much but he's there um it's just the action scenes in this film are really fun to watch i mean they are overloaded with cgi and you can really tell that none of it's real but uh, I really enjoyed the action scenes in this film more than most. But when the pacing kicks in, it kicks in slowly. And there are things that really drag. And I almost felt myself drifting off at certain points to sleep. And I was like, okay, I can't sleep. i got to watch this movie. Guy Ritchie, I'll do it for you, man. But um, there are certain points in this movie that really do drag. And it's not really a fault on the film's part. It has to be done. All of those scenes have to be in the film. So you can't really say, well, it would be a better movie if you cut these scenes out because if you cut these scenes out, you don't really have a movie. So, you know, that's just a bit of a minor flaw in terms of pacing. Um, I like it when it's fast-paced. I like it when it uses the Guy Ritchie isms. Uh, you know, it, it was great. I mean, some of the acting yet can get very hammy. And uh, overall, it's not a film that you should rush out and watch, like, ASAP, because it's going to disappoint you if you're, like, really overloaded with excitement for it. But if you want to switch your brain off and just watch some mindless action and watch, you know, some some guys with hot physiques running around killing and doing things that King Arthur does. I mean, this movie's not very memorable is what I'm trying to say. Like, uh, in about a week's time, I won't remember anything about this movie. I'm struggling to remember certain points about it now. But yeah, um, 
so if you've seen the original King Arthur movie, this is a good take on it. You know, the whole sword in the stone thing, becoming king. It is a good take on it, and it's a completely different take on that story. Um, so if you want to see that, then this is the movie to watch. But uh, I have seen better movies this week, which I will talk about today. Um, and I'll say that uh, if you are planning on seeing a movie this week, uh, the films that are out, King Arthur's probably not the best one to go for. But, uh, you know, it is bombing at the box office, so if you want to see a sequel, get out there and see it, because this does set up for a sequel. It almost felt like, I said this when I saw Warcraft, this movie had real Warcraft vibes to it. And I said when I saw Warcraft that it felt like watching a really long trailer for another movie. And that's kind of what King Arthur felt like at points. I mean, it had its own story. Um, there was a really cool battle at the end between Charlie Hunnam. And I don't know if I can say who he fights. Because, I mean, obviously it's Jude Law's character. But I don't really want to say what happens with him. Because it is really cool and I wasn't really expecting it. But when the fight started, I was watching it and thinking, who is this character? And then you find out... Um, so you'll know, I mean, if you have seen the movie or when you do see the movie, if you are planning on it. But, uh, yeah, I'll say that I won't remember this movie and there are better movies to watch this week. But if you want to have a kind of good time where the pacing's sometimes fast and sometimes slow and the Guy Ritchieisms don't always work, but you still think you'll enjoy that, then go and see uh, King Arthur Legend of the Sword. But if not, yeah, this isn't going to win you over. It's it's not that great of a movie. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I have another video coming right now, actually. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you soon uh, in about, well, if you're watching this back to back, in about 30 seconds. I'll see you guys soon. Goodbye.